So I'm gonna give you guys a walkthrough of tunefind.com. This is a website where you can actually uh, discover some music that's being placed in popular TV shows, movies. I don't know if they have commercials. No, not commercials, but they have games. They have video games as well. Okay, so TV shows, movies, and games. So a couple of things though, before we get started, if you wanna follow along, it's T-U-N-E-F-I-N-D.com, tunefind.com. Um, one thing for sure you need to be aware of though, almost exclusively all the songs and music you're gonna see featured on this website is not coming from production libraries, basically the music libraries that you guys would be submitting to if you wanna get started in the TV film licensing world. Most, if not all of these songs that I've seen on this website are coming from major label artists or established artists that have a record deal or something like that. These are, these are artists basically that have charted on the radio or on the billboard charts, right? And so you're probably not gonna be in direct competition in terms of, well, you heard this um, you know, Maroon 5 song, and so you think that you can then submit your sort of Maroon 5 style song to this TV show. Usually the reason why these popular uh, songs and, and music get, get featured on these TV shows is because the song itself is very popular, it has a built-in audience, and the producer of the TV show or the movie or the video game wants to associate their product or brand with that artist, right? So if they're producing uh, some sort of a TV show that they wanna gear at 18 to 22 year olds, you know, younger kind of, uh, you know, college age uh, sort of kids, they're gonna want music that's relevant and popular and interesting to them. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll go find the most popular hot tracks uh, appropriate for that age group and put it all over their, their uh, TV show or movie or video game in this situation, okay? In the TV film licensing world where stay-at-home producers like me and potentially you want to um, get our tracks featured, it's, it's a slightly different situation. So I don't want you to get confused in terms of thinking that this is basically your guide in terms of what music you should be producing, okay? But what I think this is great at is giving you just sort of a taste of what's out there, what gets placed a lot, what sounds are being relevantly used for different kinds of programming. Um, but again, your a lot of producers approach me when they're brand new to the licensing business and they say, hey, Jesse, I think my music would be great for CSI and you know I wanna submit to them. That's not how the industry works. It's not that there are uh, TV shows all out there as their own companies that just accept music from producers like you. That's not how the industry works. There are companies set up to gather large amounts of music from producers like you and producers like me and you know dozens of other producers and they create a large catalog for these production companies to choose from. Okay, That's how the industry works. So you trying to submit directly to a TV show is usually gonna land you in a, a, a place where you're not actually succeeding because you're not gonna actually get the exact TV show that you had in mind. But if you can get an idea for some of the relevant sounds that are out there and what's being placed a lot, you can start steering some of your music towards the music libraries in that direction because this is one way you can basically see the other side of the equation in terms of not having to guess what's useful and licensable, but actually know from a site like this, TuneFind, that can actually help you guys do it. So really cool site, very useful, but I wanna make sure you guys are aware of what we're looking at here. So if you go to the right main page, you have these uh, tabs on the bottom and on the top where you can go to TV shows, movies, games. Um, let's start with uh, just TV shows. You can click on that. And then it's gonna take you to their page where they're gonna show you um, basically a whole bunch of different TV shows. And uh, you know they have recent episodes, new, popular shows, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also search for anything you want up here. So you have this little search bar. So let's say you are looking at, I don't know, uh, Big Bang. Let's say you like that show, you're kind of interested in it. So it shows up here under shows. And then you can come down, you can see, okay, here's the season one. Let's see what they were doing. Uh, let's see what they did on the pilot. Uh, okay, they had a they had a track by Lily Allen again, an established A list artist, right? Um, who's charted? Let's check out, and you can actually click play on pretty much every track that they uh, show that shows up. Now, obviously, the, here's where it's misleading. So I want you guys to know it's not that only "Smile" by Lily Allen got placed on season one, episode one of the pilot of Big Bang Theory. I'm sure they had their background music, they had their stingers going in and out of scenes. You know how the sitcom music works. So, and that's the kind of stuff that they'd be getting from a music library, a catalog of some sort, okay? So they're not gonna get all that kind of music from an A-label artist. This is one of those myths about the licensing business that you have to be a Lily Allen to get placements. BS, garbage, yes, they get some big ones and they will get paid really well, but there's a lot more use to music than just this one very popular track that's very uh, recognizable. So you can click play on it. Now this is kind of an old episode, so obviously you probably want, would wanna look for something that's a little bit more recent. So let's see if we can find something recent. Um, you don't wanna find something that's too old. 
uh, Teen Wolf Super Supernatural. It's funny. This is a show that's always playing uh, at the gym when I work out. Uh, I never watch it, but it's just funny. I always see these two guys, these two guys always on screen every time. For some reason, I guess I just go when that's airing. So let's look at the most recent one, season 14. This is the one that's actually airing now. You can actually see all the episodes that they have from this season. Um, let's see. This is from the first episode. They got an ACDC song. This is a great example. So obviously, you're not going to come to the table with an ACDC song. They use that because we all recognize his voice and that band sound, right? But pay attention to the style of music that's getting placed, okay? And notice, you'll probably notice with a lot of these tracks, as I've told you guys in many of my previous videos, upbeat, energetic. Um, it probably 100 BPM, maybe 120 BPM or faster. That's what you're going to find on a vast majority of the tracks that get placed out there. Let's check out another uh, episode here. No songs. See, some of the uh, episodes won't have any songs. Uh, actually, you can see that right here. Um, sorry, I should have told you guys there. So as you're going through, you can actually skip the ones that don't have any songs by looking on the right side here. Uh, Optimism, this one had three. So they got the BG. Now those are interesting because those are basically both uh, kind of retro uh, tracks, either from the you know maybe 40s, 50s, uh, pretty old stuff actually. So sometimes you'll actually find, I found some of my licensing partners want this. They want to sort of emulate that old style uh, because going back and licensing some of those old tracks can be very expensive with the original publisher. So again, this is one of those things, your role in the licensing business in many ways is to become the poor man's version of some popular artist that you know it'll cost them $100,000 to license the song. They won't be paying you $100,000, but you do want to get paid to provide them sort of the alternative, again, that follows their reference, follows in their style, but obviously is not stepping on their toes, committing copyright infringement or anything like that. But you're basically giving them an alternative that gives that same feel, that same emotional appeal at a much cheaper price. But still, a much cheaper price can be $5,000, $10,000. It's not a cheap uh, price that you can get in this business. So I want to make sure you guys are, are aware of that. Let's check out one more piece of mine. Uh, so there you go. So the Supernatural um, uh, music supervisor or editor is obviously in, in part of their show requires this kind of sound, this sort of throwback sound. So you can obviously can, kind of get a feel for that. So now let's check out some movies. Let's see what kind of music gets featured in, uh, in film. Now some movies, obviously they have their own composer that gets hired to compose all the music or a team of composers that hire that gets hired to compose all the music for a particular film but sometimes they do go ahead and license music um and we'll try to find something uh, relevant and recent that we can kind of check out here uh let's see uh captain marvel that one just came out let's see what they were using in this you know a-list blockbuster film so you can guys can get a feel for uh what's what's licensable and what's useful in these kind of movies this is interesting now i'm going through the look at these tracks uh from beck uh, celebrity skin from Hole, you guys remember this, right? TLC, Waterfalls, uh, Garbage, No Doubt, Just the Girl. Okay, what I'm noticing, I actually have not seen this movie, so I can't speak on why they're using these tracks. What's huge right now in TV and movies is nostalgia, okay? Everybody wants to bring, basically people in my age group, 40s, 50s, even older, back to the 80s, back to the 90s, and remind you of your earlier years uh, when life was a little bit simpler. Um, it's what everybody is doing right now um, and it's just a trend that we are not going to be getting away from anytime soon. So as you can see when you listen to these tracks, and you've got Nirvana, R.E.M. Wow, this is nothing pretty much but a, uh, a throwback. So it's kind of interesting that that's the path that they went in with this. But you'll see a lot of movies doing this, a lot of TV shows doing that uh, to bring that nostalgia back. So uh, previously, my recommendation for all producers is like, you got to have modern music. It's got to be cutting edge because that was traditionally where the industry was probably three, four, five years ago. Uh, but now we're getting into this interesting place. And I've actually done it myself where I'm creating throwback music like 90s hip hop or 80s synth wave or 50s rock and roll. Um, I've had these opportunities thrown my way and I know that there's a lot of producers or sorry, a lot of libraries that are looking for this stuff actively. So if you've got like that sort of 90s vibe with your music production style, you, you can do that 80s sort of synth sound, whatever it is, and it's got a kind of a throwback appeal to it. It still needs to be well produced, well put together, okay? Doesn't even mean it's gonna be low quality, that's not what we want. But if you can deliver that authentic feel of a throwback era and provide it to some of your uh, libraries and partners like that, as you can see, here's the proof that it's being used you can absolutely separate yourself from a lot of producers out there that might just only be chasing the modern current sound. Like, I just want to make the cool new EDM stuff. There's definitely a lot of use for that, but there now actually is now opening up a whole new world of retro throwback legacy music, they call it, which is really, really licensable. So that's really awesome. Let's go ahead and finally check out some games, see what they have lift, um, um, listed here. Um, Battlefield Five. let's see what they got for this one. 
Um, these ones are not letting, some of them we can actually listen to them. So the ones you can, they have an eye there, but the ones you can, let's take a listen to some of these here. Now, just so you guys are aware of my put input on uh, video games, if you're not aware, video games can provide you some really nice, significant upfront sync fees. So they could be two, three grand or even more. If you have a really prominent one, sometimes it can be a lot less, 200, 500, you know, it depends on how big the game is, what their budget is and how you um, sort of prominent your music is gonna be featured. If it's like a theme thing where they're putting it on the title or if it's gonna be some part of the actual storyline within the game, okay, you're gonna get a more premium payout for that. But if it's just, you know, background music, just, you know, a character puts on a radio while he's driving a car and it's just kind of some music that you sort of hear, you're probably not gonna be paid as much. But the big thing with uh, video games is there's no back-end royalties provided because there's no agency out there going around and keeping track of how many times your track got played on the different copies of the game, right? In the future, I do believe there's gonna be an opportunity for that, but right now it's not there. So I'm not saying don't go for video games, or just be aware that the long-term income is just not there. It's still in the TV, film, commercials, you know, that kind of world. That's where you're gonna find that stuff. Let's take a listen. It's a very uh, cinematic and orchestral and very uplifting and um, you know really high quality. So you guys can kind of get an idea for this. So this sounds like it was, I mean, there's two composers here and it sounds like these guys did put together sort of production music, which may be only available for video games, but it sounds like it might also be available for other outlets as well. So um, again, I would not go into this unless you are planning on working with a library that actively gets video game placements. Some of them do, and there's a few that actually I've recommended in uh, Sync Edge actually, um, but it's not a lot of them. And just be aware that uh, it's not just for video games, obviously, that this kind of music would be applicable for though. This is very applicable for film, very applicable for trailers. So there's a lot of stuff. Even some commercials could use this really epic stuff. You guys have seen some of these, especially with the Super Bowl ads. They're getting really cinematic and really high budget. And they're putting some really high quality trailer orchestral music inside of them. So there's a bunch of different places you can get um, that kind of music place. So, but anyways, guys, feel free to, oh, and the last thing I want to show you before we go, trending music at the very top, there's this little link, trending music. This is kind of cool because it'll actually um, separate the, the the categories here by the actual track. So rather than showing the title of the TV show or the movie, it'll actually say, this track is being heard on these TV shows. So you can see something like this, this song will hit play. So again, you're not going to rip them off and do exactly like that, but just pay attention to the big things here, okay? It's got this kind of cool swelling synth underneath it. It's got a beautiful female vocal with some nice echo on it. Um, and pay attention to the lyrics and how she's singing and all that kind of stuff. This is the lane that you might want to get into if that's sort of the style that really sings to you. And you can actually see now that there's proof, yes, that sound gets licensed because that's a big question a lot of people have. Uh, let's find another one. This one had a lot of plays. Let's see. Vocal quality, the guitar, the, the reverb, right? Those are the kind of things you want to start to emulate. Now, you guys know that I say, and I said it in this video, that most tracks are upbeat and up-tempo. And you're actually going to find as you go through, you're going to find that as well. Most tracks and most sounds that you're hearing are going to be a little bit more in that mid to up-tempo. This is obviously the exception. This is more of a ballad. It's very slow. So there are places for this kind of music. All types of music can get placed, but you're not going to find the vast majority of it. So that's why I don't think that focusing on this style alone is going to be a, a path to making a lot of placements, getting a lot of uh, tracks placed out there. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of tunefind.com. Uh, dig in, have fun with it, take a listen to stuff. Uh, take a listen to everything that's getting placed um, and take notes because these are basically all potentially your new reference tracks if you want to emulate some of these sounds that are getting placed on relevant new TV shows that are airing right now. So it's a really great site. I'm glad whoever started Tune Find started it. It's a really cool thing. But again, just remember it's a partial capture of what happens in TV. These are not the only tracks that get placed, but it does give you some sort of a finger on the pulse of what's happening in the business. So it's probably something that I would say once a month, log in, listen to some of the new placements and the new TV shows that are new, using new music, and just make sure that you are aware of those kind of things. Because sometimes just being aware of where the industry is going can help you make better decisions in your productions to make sure you're staying relevant um, and useful to this business. And if we're not being useful in serving this industry, we're not doing anything productive, right? That's our, that's our bottom line here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable.